back on the Pistons. This is one of the things that stopped me last time because I forgot to buy connecting rod bearings. So we're gonna put them in, test the tolerances, take them back out, lube everything. Um, but they are all new rings. The rings are, they call it clocking the rings. So you can see the gaps don't line up. So you don't get any oil blow by. I've got my piston ring compressor. Just goes nicely over top like this. Tighten it down. Dot goes forward, dimple goes backwards. We slide her in like that. Just gonna double check our clearances down here because we don't want to hit our crankshaft. We're in the wrong here. Let's revamp the whole thing. And of course, off camera, I gotta figure it out. But you've gotta do it is you gotta go up from the bottom with the insulation tool and around. But for now, this is a little backwards, but we'll do the connecting rod test. So you can see my connecting rod down here. Basically what I did was rotated the crankshaft so I knew when I was putting it in, I wouldn't hit it. I decided I'm going to put the bearing on in here. Not that this is the easiest thing in the world to do. There we go. Pull the piston up. I've already got this side done up with the new bearing. And we gotta put a piece of plastic cage on there and we'll find out what our tolerances are. And we'll put it right there. Okay, so we're looking at 15 foot pounds and then 60 degrees. Torque down. No back and forth wiggle. We got a bit of side to side. We want that. All right, let's pop these off and see what our plastic gauge says. So I should be 0.023 to 0.076. It's a big range. I don't know if this will show up on the camera or not. We are at 0.076. So we're on the bigger end. So we'll say we're in spec there. Now, we gotta push the piston back up lube this bearing, bring it back down. That one will be in. It's sliding nice. I got some Lucas assembly lube because, you know, why not? We'll set this guy on and we'll move on to cylinder number two. Best thing to do with rings is find the edge and just kind of slide them off like that. Badoom. This ring, there is absolutely no identifying marks on. There's no angle on it. It's a flat surface, but top ring. So second ring, we'll find our gap. There we go. Small dot on there to tell you what the orientation is. That means that side goes up. And also if you look super close, it has a little bit of an angle to it. Basically what this dot tells you is that this is the widest part and then the chamfer is there. So this is slightly narrower. So it's like a sweeper ring. Now, oil rings. First super thin ring. Second is this crazy honeycomb ring. My five-year-old did my did my nails for me yesterday. We had a spa day. It was awesome. Oh, well, somehow I managed to pull the bottom oil ring off. Look at, there's a lot of gunge in there. We're gonna start with this crazy oil ring. And what we're gonna do is find a groove like this, lock it in, and just kind of wrap it around through the groove that it's in. See, it pops right in. Same scenario, I like to do the bottom one first because for some reason I think it's more difficult. It's not. So it goes in the groove right under. And once again, we just walk it around. And there we go. So we have our bottom ring on. And then we do the same with the top for this one. Now when it comes time to putting it in, we'll just make sure none of those grooves line up with each other. So we maintain compression. See, there's one split there. 
there, and then the oil ring one was over there. So now I am going to go get a really small screwdriver. There's a lot of grunge in this one. The first one wasn't so bad. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean out this gap. So I found another little problem here too. This was stuck in place. These are supposed to float back and forth. I've got it moving now. So I'm going to steam clean all this carbon out around here too. So there's definitely an issue with this cylinder. So a little bit of time traveling here. It's two hours later and uh, brought this up to the ultrasonic cleaner and cleaned out all the ring lands there because Oof, that carbon was intense. We'll go ahead and redo all these. this back over. Cylinder number three, Eve. Okay, well, let's go get the rings off and see how badly carbon up it is. So it's been a week, still working on the engine, but uh, when I went home last time I had a thought and you know we're getting this all back together and you'll notice that something oh, is not there anymore. I took piston number one back out because with two and three I cleaned the carbon out from behind the rings before putting it back together with one. I didn't know there was any carbon behind the rings. It just happened to be that two was so bad that it made me continue to look down the line, which is very happy I did. So it drove me nuts. I was thinking, oh, you know, it's probably fine. It went in okay, all this kind of stuff, but I couldn't let it go. In here, I don't know if you can see the black lines. I tried to get the assembly loop off, but so right in there, there's still a bunch of carbon. And these are full. You know, like, see, it's it's even like coming out in places. So we're gonna clean this all out. And you know, when I looked up how to uh, go about doing it, so I'm not just hacking away with this little pick. Although this thing has been great, I went to the internet. And I went to one of my favorite parts of the internet, the forums. Don't know how much anybody on here reads forums. I love it because. The same thing one person absolutely swears by, basically burnt down someone else's house or kicked their dog or something. What I read was the best thing <clears throat> to get carbon off is a mix of acetone and transmission fluid. Now there's a bunch of people that disagreed with it. The best thing was this was on a moped forum. Not a lot on the, uh, the actually engine building sites, but you know, the moped form seemed to really come good on this one. And I trust them because you know what? Those guys run a lot of carbon. And they say about a 50-50 mix. So my thing is I don't want it to go really up too far into this Teflon. I'd like to keep that intact. I don't think it would take it off, but at the same time, you know, acetone can be pretty strong. So we'll do our 50-50. Here goes the acetone. And we'll do our other 50. Where are we at? I still gotta make sure I get into that top groove. Oh yeah, we're there. Now we'll just let it mix up a bit here. Do 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 stirring. What I'm going to do now is, 
I'm going to get coffee. Why? Because I'm old. And uh, I find, I know we say that a lot, it seems on this show, but one of the best things about being old is you get routine. My routine so far has been coffee and donuts when I'm down at the shop. And you know what? You guys benefit because I'm funnier. It's like how when other people around me drink booze, I look better. Well, you know what? When I drink coffee, I become a little bit funnier. Well, at least to myself. My wife may disagree. I think I'm one solid dad joke away from divorce. Got pissed in one back in. And check this out. It was right about there. It had this real tight spot. And I guess what it was was it was actually the rings binding in cylinder one. Because they weren't fully compressed. They were pushed out by just that little bit of carbon behind them. So that means I get the fun job now of going through the other five, which is fine. I would much rather do it and take the time and know I have a strong bottom end. Now you can see just the crud that comes out. Like it's just thick and so all of that junk is pushing your ring out. Like, lots of junk. These ones are obviously harder because it's so narrow. So the old ring just kind of slides in, I just go easy. Look at So all of that is hiding behind your rings. Now this will clean the top and the bottom because it's thicker. See? Stuff that comes out. And then I know when it gets hard to move that we're in a trouble spot. Something else that's uh I'm guessing everyone knows, but I did that first and it makes life easier is you put your bearing caps on, you'll see they actually line up with the way the rod was cut. See how it's got a weird angle there, goes right in. If I were to flip it around to the other side, it does not fit. See the gap? And you go back there. Perfect fit just like a puzzle piece. All right, so piston five is going in. And uh, we're muddling our way through. Wanna do a flyover? <laughs> oh, not that. The gear's got, got a couple things going on there. And then we get to nothing. More nothing, more nothing. Ooh. Oh. Alright, on to my next bit of business.